Поздравляем тебя с днем рождения, с 18-летием. Праздничное настроение, дух компании поддерживается. Сегодня можно приходить в рваных джинсах, приходить на работу в футболках. 18 лет это круто, это сильно и полный вперед. 7 футов под килем. Достойный парень, сложившийся. По-взрослому. С размахом. В костюме, но с чувством юмора, понимающий, как общаться с людьми и всегда замечательным настроением. Восемнадцать. 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 Without aluminium, the technological advances made in the 20th century would not have been possible. Aluminium has become a key element in the fast-paced development of a number of industries, including aviation, construction, transport, mechanical engineering, electronics and pharmaceuticals. Aluminium production is now a leading sector in developed economies, and to some extent it determines their economic growth. The world's leading aluminium producer, Roussel, is the flagship of the Russian economy. The company accounts for 9% of global aluminium production and 9% of global alumina production. Roussel employs over 70,000 people, producing over 4.5 million tons of aluminium per annum. These accomplishments were made possible by the successful development of Russia's aluminium industry. In the Soviet Union, the first ton of aluminium was produced on May the 14th, 1932, at the recently commissioned Volkhov Aluminium Smelter near Leningrad. However, it all began ten years earlier, when Lenin prompted the State Commission for the Electrification of Russia to develop its first national economic recovery plan and begin building power plants. 
A hydroelectric power plant, built on the Volkhov River in accordance with this plan, supplied enough electricity for the first Soviet aluminium smelter. This was a great achievement for the young Soviet state. The Volkhov hydroelectric power plant generated more power than any other power plant in Europe. In 1933, the second Soviet aluminium smelter began operating, situated in Dnipropetrovsk. By 1935, the USSR stopped importing aluminium and started using only domestically produced metal. These new methods for processing raw materials were developed at Leningrad State Institute of Applied Chemistry, making it possible to build the Tichvin alumina refinery and the Urals aluminium smelter a year later. By 1940, the Soviet Union was the third largest aluminium producer in the world. However, a year later, war broke out, and thus the smelters were evacuated. Both the Volkhov smelter and the Tichvin refinery were dismantled and moved to various locations, including Sverdlovsk, Kamensk-Uralsky, and the Bogoslovsk smelter construction site. Having moved thousands of kilometers, the production facilities doubled their efforts to make aluminium. On January the 7th, 1943, Siberian aluminium was produced for the first time at the Novokuznetsk aluminium smelter, at the time called the Stalin aluminium smelter. On Victory Day, the new Bogoslovsk alumina refinery began operating. Due to the Soviet people's efforts, by the end of World War II, the USSR was producing more aluminium than before the war. Following the war, demand for aluminium increased several fold. The Volkhov and Dnipropetrovsk aluminium smelters were restored in record time, as was the Tichvin alumina complex. Now the Baksitagorsk alumina refinery. However, combined capacity of the existing and relaunched production sites could no longer meet the country's increasing demand for aluminium. Within 15 years of the end of the war, Three new smelters were operating in the USSR, one in Kandalaksha, one in Nadvoitsi, and one in Volgograd. A major breakthrough was made in the Soviet aluminium industry after the country started building large hydroelectric power plants on the Siberian rivers. In the 1960s, the Yakutsk and Krasnoyarsk aluminium smelters were built, utilizing power generated by the new hydroelectric complexes. In just five years, aluminium production in the USSR doubled, exceeding one million tons per annum. In 1966, production started at the Bratsk aluminium smelter, which remains the world's largest aluminium smelter. In the year of the Moscow Olympics, the USSR produced three million tons of aluminium. Five years on, the Cyanogorsk aluminium smelter was launched, a new facility with modern design and equipment. As a result, by the late 1980s, the USSR had become the world's leader in production and consumption of aluminium. In the 1990s, the situation in Russia's aluminium industry deteriorated. The collapse of the economy effectively pushed the whole industry to the brink of disintegration. The country's main consumers of aluminium, the military-industrial complex and the mechanical engineering industry, cut back and production began shutting down. By 1994, per capita aluminium consumption shrunk dramatically. After the collapse of the USSR, over half the alumina refineries were located abroad. Those that stayed in Russia could only meet 40% of Russia's demand for alumina. Considering paychecks were usually delayed for months, skilled workers started leaving the profession. Many of the smelters started shifting to the global market. 
Overnight, the entire aluminium industry ended up under the control of foreign traders, who were only interested in making money quickly with little interest in the long-term development of the smelters. They were not interested in modernizing the smelters, but instead sucking them dry. Russia's aluminium sector was turning into a supply of cheap raw materials for the global economy. However, those that recognized the potential of the industry were not content with this situation. They wanted to create a global aluminium corporation based on Russian smelters. A key event that put an end to the looting and plundering of the Russian aluminium industry was the merger of Sibneft and Siberian Aluminium in 2000, which resulted in the creation of Rusal, the world's largest producer of aluminium. Rusal immediately set out to regain Russia's position in the global aluminium industry. Having brought several smelters together, the company launched a series of programs to modernize and upgrade the production equipment, whilst creating its own R&D facilities and gaining a foothold on five continents to secure a resource base. Several years on, major modernization programs were completed at the Krasnoyarsk and Cyanogorsk aluminium smelters, as well as at the Nikolaev Alumina Refinery. Assets were bought in Guinea, Guyana and Australia to secure sufficient supplies of raw materials. Today the company has enough raw materials to last over 100 years. 2006 saw the start of production at the Hakas aluminium smelter, which was the first built in Russia in the last 20 years. In 2007, Rusal merged all the aluminium and alumina assets in Russia and the Ukraine and bought aluminium and alumina production facilities from Glencore to create the united company Rusal, consolidating Russia's aluminium industry in one major merger. As a result, Russia now has a very international company and is a leader in the global aluminium industry. Rusal is one of the most efficient aluminium companies in the world. The company's engineering and technology center and engineering and construction division ensure Rusal not only retains a technological advantage in terms of developing new processes and technologies, but also in building modern aluminium and alumina production facilities in record time. Sustained growth in the modern economy is not possible without diversification. Therefore, Rusal purchased a 25% stake in the world's largest producer of nickel and palladium, Norilsk Nickel, a very beneficial move. Furthermore, the construction of its own power generation facilities will give the company an important competitive edge, while ensuring sustained development of the business for future years. Large-scale investment projects, such as the construction of the power and metals complex in Krasnoyarsk territory and the construction of the Taishet aluminium smelter in the Irkutsk region, will enable Rusal to further consolidate its leading position in the global market. Whilst the proximity of the company's production facilities to China and Southeast Asia gives it a unique opportunity for promoting its product to the world's fastest-growing market. Eighty years have passed since the Volhoff aluminium smelter produced its first slab of aluminium in the USSR. A lot has changed since then. New smelters and refineries have been built whilst new production processes have been developed. But one thing has always remained the same. The hard working and persistence from the people who first built the aluminium industry in the USSR from scratch. The people who rebuilt it from the ruins it had been left in after the economic calamities of the 1990s. And the people who are now building a strong foundation for the sustained growth of the best aluminium company in the world. It is these four generations of workers, technicians and managers who are the real story behind Russian aluminium. A story of people who never rest on their laurels, but instead strive to make things better. I want to live so very bad. I want to make things last forever. To talk to trees like I was mad. And be successful in each endeavor.